listen to name hit your book review and that is for fireblood by ellie blake and yes i'm so keen this is a book i've been wanting to read for the longest time but i just kept putting it off because there's so many other things happening but i finally read it so now when the sequel nightblood which is the third and final book in this trilogy comes out i am ready and i'm here for it and i'm just so glad this was so good because there has been quite a few sequels where i did read the first book when it came out and when the second books came out i read them but didn't enjoy them as much so this was a really good sequel one that i really enjoyed i really recommend that you read the frostblood trilogy even though the last book isn't out yet it's coming out in june not much longer to wait, but I recommend this so much. So because this book is a sequel, there are going to be spoilers in it. So I've warned you, don't yell at me if you get spoiled because I told you so. So it's your own fault. But let's get in the video. So I was just so happy to be back in this world. Like I seriously love the magic system and the characters and the plot and the writing. It's all beautiful. And I was just like, yes. I can't believe I'm back in it. Oh my god, guys, I totally had to stop filming because my neighbour turned up and I had to go out there and talk to them for a little bit. But now I am back. It's probably looking darker, but we'll get back to the review and I don't even know what I was up to. Okay, so... This book picked up pretty much straight after Frostfire ended, which I really enjoyed. I sometimes hate it when books have like month gaps, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Glad for this book to be pretty much set straight after, which is really good. And also what was good is we got to see the aftermath of the Frost Throne being destroyed and the death of Rasmus, or Ramses, who is Arcus's younger brother. He got killed because the throne was taking over him and he had to die because he was just going to stuff everything up. So it was pretty sad for Arcus because his brother had to die and he sort of had to be there where it happened. Arcus is now the Frostfire King and he should have always been this king but Ramses did send someone to kill Arcus and he nearly died so Arcus was in hiding and now he can finally be the king that he's meant to be which is great and Arcus really has to try and get the whole kingdom on his side and try to bring back some good to the kingdom. They've only really known the coldness of this horrible monarch and now that Arcus is going to be the king he is going to try and make things better but many people that were very powerful under Ramses being the king are kind of annoyed because Arcus wants to divide the land between everyone and give people food and stuff that they need and a lot of the rich people who are all the lords and that are very annoyed about this so he's got a lot of political intrigue around him at the moment because he's got to try and figure out how to make everyone happy yet not everyone's going to be happy so it's a very hard balance and he's going to have a lot of hard decisions to make in the future. So if Ruby feels like an ounce of being a fireblood in a frostblood world she doesn't feel welcome except by a couple of people so it makes it very hard for her to connect to anyone to be able to be who she really is and just she gets like nervous around so many people because she doesn't know what they're going to do or how they're going to react to her. But Ruby is starting to learn the ways of the court and developing her powers more and she's becoming really kick-ass. When an opportunity arises for Ruby to travel to the Fireblood lands which is her homelands she jumps at it. And this means that she has to leave Arcus behind and she gets to travel with the mysterious Kai who we know nothing about, some random stranger and Arcus is not keen about any of this. And Ruby is hoping that by going to the Fireblood land she's going to be able to destroy the Fireblood foam because the Frost foam was defeated in the last book and the Minix was released into the world which isn't great but they wanted to destroy the Fireblood foam so then they can kill these two demon creatures and that's where the plot is hopefully going to go. I love Ruby as a character though. She is just so strong and fierce and brave and just the way that she can just keep living her life surrounded by all this coldness of the Frostblood people. It's crazy that she can just put on such a brave face and just constantly be around them when they are just horrible to her most of the time. And she really did become more confident in this book with her abilities and just herself as a person because now that she doesn't have to hide it all the time that she is a Fireblood, she got to learn more, she got to be more and she was able to just tell people, nah, -uh, you are not as good as you think you are and I am a great person you shut up. And also in this book she did have to make some really tough decisions and it was very interesting reading her thought process with them because there's so many different elements for her but really she has to make the decision that is best for her and best for the people as a whole. She has to let go of important things so other people are going to be able to live great lives and it was just like it was a really good part of the book. And Ruby does get to the Fireblood lands and she has to do the trials to become a master and she goes through all this kind of stuff. The thing that we find out is that she is actually Actually the niece of the Firebud Queen, so Ruby is a princess. So Queen Nala Nalani Nalani. Queen Nalani is her auntie and it's so great and what this means is Ruby is now the heir to the Fireblood lands so the Queen wants her to ultimately kill Frostbloods now like that's the battle that's happening because years and years ago the 
frost bloods pushed out the fire bloods and they sort of fought over the land and the frost bloods won and now the fire bloods hate them all but the throne is influencing the lani's decisions so it's all happening and ruby doesn't want to believe that she could be the princess and actually have this royal life and she can't believe her mum would have been a fire blood and never told her and it was just all this was happening it was great also at the end of the book when we did find the fire blood throne she destroyed the throne and managed to destroy one of the minaxes so one of them is left but the god has descended on the world now, so I don't know if that is any better. Oh my god, I love Arca so much. Like, he has to be one of my favourite characters. He's just amazing. Like, he was great in the first book, and I loved him so much in this book, even though he wasn't in it much. But he just keeps developing more and more as a beautiful character that I love so much. Like, he seriously has so much on his plate right now that I don't even know how he's coping and acting so chill and not even stressed to the max at all. It's great. But the thing, too, is with Frostblood, it's is they hardly show emotion, and Arcus is no exception to this. Like, he does show endearment and tenderness to Ruby, but generally he's just like I'm just like, okay, emotions are a good thing. They are not a bad thing. And like, I do love the fact that he loves Ruby so much and he's so sweet with her and the fact that he just left his kingdom to go to the Fireblood Lands to rescue her because he thought she was in danger just, like, hurts my heart so much. Like, that's love right there, bitch. Like, I actually love their relationship so much, but it was not smooth sailing in this book and it made me upset. Like, seriously, though, Arcus loving a Fireblood is not helping him being the Frostblood King. It does not help because they all hate each other and it makes it very hard and it's like really he needs to marry anyone other than Ruby at least another Frostblood but he doesn't want to do that because it's going to be too hard to give up the person that he loves so much like ultimately it would be the best for Ruby to leave but she doesn't want to but then when this opportunity arises to go to the Firebird land she's like "Ooh, I'm gonna go bye bye I guess it puts so much strain on the relationship and they semi break up and it hurt me like it physically hurt me. So I was so happy that Arcus did turn up and save her and even though they didn't want to be around Ruby for a little bit there, they got back together. They ultimately knew that they were in love and perfect for each other and I just can't wait for the next book because I hope they don't have any more big arguments because it just hurts so much. So Kai was a fun new addition to the story. So he's a fireblood and he has a much warmer personality than Arcus's pun intended. He was very funny and snarky and had a very great fashion sense which was so great. Like people who have great fashion is great in books even though you can't visualize it completely the way it's described is amazing he also has amazing control over his abilities and even though he did fail the um, master's trials the first time he gets another crack at it and he's a great guy he's got a heart he's beautiful i liked him he was a great teacher to ruby and really became a great friend for her in this book which i love so much my one problem with kai though is his introduction in the story made a love triangle and i was like heck to the no arcus and ruby are end game why are you just why are you ruining in my life. Like, Ruby and Kai could have been great together if Arcus didn't exist. If she never met Arcus and just suddenly met Kai, yes, I would have been all for it, but I am not all for it when she already has a prior relationship to an amazing guy, and then this other amazing guy comes in and I'm just like, can you stop? Like, I understand why Ruby develops feelings for Kai, because Arcus and Ruby did say to each other they were going to let each other go a little bit, like, not necessarily break up, but just, you know, be open to change, and that's what happened. So she sort of developed feelings for him, but in the end she ultimately knew that Arcus was the one that she was meant to be with, but still why put me through this drama? So Ruby and Kai did kiss twice. So once it happened in her room, but right before they were going to do the trials or something, and it was it was getting pretty heated. And then they had to kiss on this balcony, so they did kiss a couple of times, but not much else happens really, does it? Or maybe the fact that they're engaged is an issue. <laughs> totally forgot about that small little um, snippet of information, but they got engaged, but I don't know if it's still standing because she's technically with Arcus now, but she's still engaged to Kai, so it's very confusing. But yes, I just didn't feel like this book needed a love triangle. Like, why did you need to add another trope to this book? It's got tropes. Okay, it's got tropes, but the way the author writes the story makes me, like, forget about those tropes, which is great. At the end of the book, I didn't see Morella, if that's how you say her name, Morella, but I didn't see her being bad and having the Minex possessing her and her accepting that possession, and I was like, what in the hell? Why are you doing this? I was always jealous of Ruby. She sort of wanted Argus to be with her so she could be queen, but I didn't think she would stoop so low as to let this evil embrace her, and it was pretty sad, but then she died at the end, so I was just like, but, but, 
you go on, it was over pretty quickly, that's fine by me. Ultimately, this book was amazing and I can't wait for book three. Like, I just, why do I read this so early? There's so many books now that I'm reading so early that I have to wait so long for the next books to come out and it's hurting me. But it's like, I have to read them now where I won't have time to move to the release date so then it's going to be worse because you're not reading it, then you got two books to read and then everyone else is reading it and you're just like, oh my god, I don't know what's happening, it's too hard. But yes, this book was amazing. I loved it so much and I just hope more people read it because not many people have. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this book review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye!